welcome to Behind the Music and happy Advent 4. Somehow we are only days away from Christmas, ready or not. My favorite part of the Christmas season are the carols. I love playing them, I love hearing people sing them. I even turn on the Christmas music on the radio station every now and then, mostly because I want my kids to learn all of the Christmas songs. But it's just such a joyous part of this season, being able to sing these songs about Jesus' birth. This weekend, the choir from Victory has the opportunity to go do some masked, socially distanced outdoor caroling for an assisted living center here in town. And we're just looking forward to being able to share some of the joy of this season. The first recorded Christmas celebration that we're aware of happened in 336 AD. That was a long time ago. And the oldest known Christmas carol is from about that same time period. It would seem appropriate that if they were having a Christmas celebration, they probably sang some Christmas songs all those hundreds and hundreds of years ago. The term Noel, we didn't hear until about a thousand years later in the 1400s. We have the first record of a Noel. And then 400 years after that, somebody wrote the first Noel. So don't get the actual first Noel confused with the hymn, the first Noel, because there's 400 years difference there. But the Noel, the word Noel, is taken from the French Noel and brought into the English, and it, we just left it that way instead of translating it. We use it mostly to refer to carols, as we're going to sing a Noel, but also it's from the Latin Natalis which is natal, like birth. So really it means the birth of Christ or Christmas. So you could wish somebody a joyous Noel, which is a thinly veiled translation from the French, Je Noël. So the French have this tradition of these Noels. For hundreds and hundreds of years, they've had these Noels. And they would be sung in secular settings. They would be sung in sacred settings. And organists would take these popular carols Noels and play sets of variations on them. Sometimes they'd be improvised, sometimes they'd write them out. And there's a long tradition of having these Noels for organ in France. Uh, there's a story about a French organist, Pilbastre, who was so well known for his carols, his Noels, variations, people would come from all over to hear him play and the churches would just be packed. And at his parish, the priest forbade him from playing on Christmas Eve. He wasn't about to have the church filled with people only there for the carols. So it's been a long-standing problem that people just want to sing Christmas carols on Christmas Eve. I'd like to share with you a Noel, a French Noel. Now this is not a French organ, but I've done my best to give it a French accent for you. We're lucky that we have some reeds and things, and so I think it will sound a little bit more French than how it normally sounds kind of German. We get to play a lot of Bach and things, but I think it's gonna sound a little bit French for you. This is a piece, a Noel, from the 17th century composer, Louis Claude de Caen. He wrote 12 Noels. This is number 10, and it's based on the carol, When God Was Born at Christmas. It's not one that we sing. You may recognize it, you may not. Let me play it for you. So this is a very popular carol in the 17th century and probably even before that. If you'd been a French king in the court at Versailles, I'm sure you heard somebody play this for you on the organ. So it was very well known, very well known Noel. So we have this set of variations set on it. The fun thing about French music from the French classical period is that they were very clear about how it should be registered. They would even title each variation by how it should sound. So that helps us out. So on this one, we play it on one manual and they want us to have a crumb horn sound, which is a, a type of reed. So let me play you part of the first variation. that kind of got to get some bite to it. I like it. I love these the French sound. Now the French also have this idea and if you're French no offense I mean this in the nicest way that they're a little bit proud. They're a little bit you have to sit a little straighter when you play French music and uh, 
we're just gonna make it a little, a little French. We don't want it to be basic like the Germans. So we're gonna make a little, some ornaments and we're gonna make it a little an egal, a little, not exactly strict. You can hear that. <laughs> Dun, da, da, dun, da, da. It kind of has a lilt to it. It's very dance-like. It's not just dun dun da, dun da, da, dun da, da, dun da, da. Also, something on the organ. We can only control the volume by the stops that we pull. I could add some more here and it would be louder, but this is the sound that we want, so I'm not going to add more. And so the only way that I can control the volume is by articulation. And so if I were to hold this. The sound blossoms, there's more air that it continues. It's not like, like a piano when you hit the string, it sounds and then the sound dies away. On an organ, you hold it and the pressure from the wind keeps going and it creates this illusion of the sound crescendoing, blossoming. And so if you want it to do the opposite of that, you can play a little bit lighter. So when I do these echoes, I'm gonna try and make the first one to you. I want you to think that it's louder and that the echo is softer, even though I'm playing on the exact same stops and the exact same registration, I'm not changing anything other than how I'm playing with my fingers. So let's try that. Did you hear that? The first one I played a little bit more connected so that the sound had time to develop and the second one was shorter so it sounded more like an echo. Lots of cool things that we can do with this. So now the next variation, we're gonna be using two manuals. We're still gonna have this crumb horn sound and then we're going to be using a cornet. So let's put them together. I love it. The contrast of the reed with the kind of the bright. It's very fun, very fun indeed. Now we get to the, the loudest part of this, which is a grand jeu. Grand jeu, it has reeds in it. I'm using a 16 foot, we've got foundations, and this is just gonna be big and grand, like it says grand, okay? So here we have a va variation, grand jeu. And it's not written to include pedal, but because I wanted to have a 16 foot reed, uh, like they would have had on many of the French organs of this time, I'm just gonna be having my feet help me out here. Isn't that cool? I love it. It feels so big. I had the opportunity to play at the organ of the Chapel of Versailles, and it was just such an awesome experience to be in this room with this gorgeous instrument from hundreds of years ago and to hear the reeds and to hear the sounds and to imagine what it must have been like all these years ago when the music was being composed and played by these organists. I'm gonna play you apart from the very final variation. We have an echo effect going on. And so what's going to happen here is I'm gonna start here and then I'm gonna echo and I'm gonna echo some more. So it's going, I'm gonna use all three manuals to create this echoing effect. Hear it? last week of Advent, as Christmas is on the horizon, I hope that you enjoy singing some Noels this week. I hope you enjoy listening to this Noel, and I just want to wish you a joyeux Noel. Merry Christmas, joyous Christmas. I'll see you again next week.